How's it going, Green Gang? I hope everybody had a great holiday season. If you guys celebrate, everybody spent some time with some family members and hopefully got a little something for Christmas. In this video, we're going to dive into water quality, some best watering practices for our living soil growers, the differences between soft and hard water, some different filter options that you may need or not need, and some tips even for our soilless and hydro growers out there. So let's get into it. Now, there are several types of water that one can use to water our beloved plants. There is tap, well water, spring water, lake, pond, stream, RO, distilled. There's also living water inside coconuts and other fruits and plants. Water can also be soft or hard. So what is soft or hard water? Hard water is water that is high in mineral content, specifically a high concentration of calcium and magnesium ions. These minerals can be deposited as scale on pipes and appliances and can also interfere with the effectiveness of soap and detergents. Soft water, on the other hand, has a low mineral content and is relatively free of calcium and magnesium ions. It's generally more effective at lathering with soap and can be easier on plumbing and appliances. One way to differentiate hard water from soft water is to look at the lather that is produced when soap is mixed with the water. Hard water will produce a less substantial lather and may leave some soap scum residue behind on skin or surfaces that have been washed with it. Soft water, on the other hand, will produce a rich lather and is less likely to leave a soap scum residue. You can also use a few drops of Jadam wetting agent if your water to test if your water is soft or hard. If you put a couple of drops of JWA in a sample of water and mix it up and it's not clear, it becomes cloudy, you have hard water. JWA mixes into soft water really well and is clear. It may be slightly colored, but it is clear and not cloudy. Now it's worth noting that the term hard water is generally used to refer to water that is high in calcium and magnesium ions, but the water can also be hard because of other minerals such as iron or manganese. In general, water that is high in any mineral content is considered to be a hard water. So when it comes to plants, what do they like, soft or hard water? Well, the answer is a little muddy. If the water is naturally soft, it is less of an issue, but if you're using a water softener that uses salt as an ion exchange, you may be adding salinity to your soil or hydro system that you weren't accounting for. And if your water is too hard, you may be locking out nutrients in soils by throwing off the balance of minerals, and in hydro, your fertigation doses will be off due to extra minerals and salinity that you didn't account for. Now, the best water for our plants really depends on the the system we're growing in and the source of the water that you have access to. Now when it comes to the quality of resources I use in my garden, I like to follow rule of thumb from best, better to good. If it can't at least be good quality, I'd rather not use it, especially when growing in a living soil I intend to keep for a long time for production plants, aka food or medicine. Before we get into water quality for hydro slash soilless grown plants versus organic or living soil plants, Let's go over a few water treatment and filter options. Now there are several ways to filter water and remove contaminants without using chemicals, so let's go over a few. Now boiling is one of them, but it isn't very effective for our use case scenario, especially if you, mo if you have more than a few plants. Now you can filter, which is the next best scenario here, which uh, you know, you're filtering through a clean, fine mesh filter, which can take a lot of the particulates, some of the bacteria, algae, and smart, small particles out. And then there's even better filters like ceramic filters, sand filters, carbon filters, and RO filters, all of which have their own place for depending on the water source and the water that you need to come out of the filter. Now, another great option especially for the people that are um, growing hydro or uh, soilless medium and they're getting their water from a stream, a lake, or a natural source, is a UV light. Now, UV disinfectant is extremely effective at killing bacteria and other pathogens in the water and can provide a double layer from the carbon filter and using the UV light. Now, the fourth way that you can make sure that your water is very clean for your plants is distillation. Now, distillation removes all minerals and sterilizes the water because it's brought up to a boiling temperature, distilled, and, you know, condensed back down. 
Now, distil, you know, distilled water is great for hydro growers or soilless medium growers. But for uh, living soil growers, using um, zero mineral water can be a problem. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, the fifth way that you can make sure water is clean of, uh, you know, pathogens and bacteria is, is to use the sun, you know, solar disinfection. Now, if you use a clear bottle or you have clear tubing and you make a radiator style loop, and that water is allowed to sit in there getting hit by the sun for several hours throughout the day, that will kill a lot of bacteria and pathogens. So people growing outdoors, um, you know, greenhouses or, or smaller plots, uh, might be a great option for disinfecting a natural water source is solar disinfection. Now, when it comes to growing plants hydroponically, it's important to use water that is of good quality and free of contaminants, like we were saying before. There are several methods that can be used to purify water for hydroponic systems, including reverse osmosis, distillation, and deionization. Each of these methods are effective at removing impurities from the water, although they differ in terms of cost and efficacy. Overall, the best water for hydroponic systems is pure clean water that is appropriate pH and nutrient levels that you've added in because you have a clean slate and know what you've added in. Using water that's free of impurities and contaminants will ensure that the health of the plant remains consistent throughout the whole grow. By allowing precise dosing on fertilization and ensuring there's no chlorine, fluoride, and other chemicals that are added by city water supplies, this minimizes variables and is extremely great for hydro growers. Now, like I was mentioning earlier, you can use spring, stream, or lake water in hydro or soilless mediums as long as it's been tested and in my opinion, at least has a particulate filter and a UV sterilizer to ensure that no bad bacteria enters the system or particulates are clogging up the system. Now, before we get into the best type of water and watering practices for living soils, I want to give a huge shout out to Mars Hydro for sponsoring part of this video. Mars Hydro has tons of grow equipment in their product line, and their customer service and equipment keep improving over time. Here's the FC6500, a 730 watt bar style light that gets a usable photon efficiency of 2.38, which is extremely great. This light is equipped with close to 5000K and 3000K full spectrum white LEDs as well as 660 nanometer Osram Reds. The driver can also be installed either inside or outside the tent, and it comes with brackets for both. This is by far their best light, in my opinion. Their 5x5 tent has quality construction, and I appreciate the zipper flap that will prevent the light leaks when the zipper gets a little worn from use. And they also recently put out a fan filter controller combo that controls the exhaust fan via temp or humidity readings, which is super convenient. Once again, thanks Mars Hydro for sponsoring part of this video. And if you're looking for some grow equipment, check out Mars Hydro, link in the description. And make sure to use code GOBLIN510 to save at checkout. Once again, thanks Mars Hydro for sponsoring this video. And let's get back to the best watering practices for organic living soils and what's the best water to use for that. When it comes to growing plants in a living organic soil, the best water to use is clean, fresh water that's free of contaminants and is of a neutral pH. Water that's high in minerals or has a high or low pH can be detrimental to the living soil plants as well, as it can interfere with the ability to absorb nutrients from the soil. Ideally, the water used for plants in a living organic soil should be free of chlorine and other chemicals that can be found in tap water, just like in the hydro systems. These chemicals can be harmful for the beneficial microbes and fungi that are present in the soil, which are essential for healthy plant growth and the nutrient cycling. Now, no matter the water source you have, it's a great idea to get a water test done. Even if your city provides results for their water treatment, their results can be very different by the time the water gets to your house. So using Logan Labs or a local branch of your closest university to getting a detailed water test at least a couple of times a year is good practice. Now for the types of water I'd like to use on living soils systems or organic systems, I'd like to start with, a, you know, a natural spring water. If you can't get that a lake or a stream or well water, obviously all of these need to be tested before use. And then if you don't have 
any of those options uh, i would use tap water last now tap water isn't extremely bad but it does have chlorine fluoride chloramines and other chemicals in it to keep it safe for people to drink while it's traveling down long pipelines but it should absolutely should be removed before putting it on any plants whether it's hydro system or a living soil system because these chemicals are not good for living things that's why they're in the water to make sure the water is free of bacteria and pathogens and it provides safe drinking water so if you are stuck with using tap water it's highly recommended that you get a water filter now some sources won't need any treatment and that's part of the reason why you should get a couple of water tests a year one test in the spring and one when winter starts to set in are good times to test because water quality seems to waver during seasonal changes for many of us like i said tap is our only option or best option in that case you would definitely like i was saying want a good carbon filter like a boogie blue or a hydrologic dechlorinator and this will take out almost all the chemicals that the water treatment plant adds in without wasting any water like an ro filter would or without spending energy trying to distill the water whether that be electrical or you know natural gas then to make sure i would add some drops of balance to the filtered water to add essential minerals and make sure that the water's clean now this is an you know additional step that's not necessary but it does help quite a bit because it makes sure that the mineral content of the water is more balanced and it does help and remove some of the chemicals that are added into our water from the water treatment um, facilities now if your water is extremely bad and this is why we do the water test you may still want to distill or use an ro filter to ensure that you're starting with a clean slate but if you are using distilled water or ro water on living soil plants you're going to want to re-add minerals to that water especially um, if you use that water over and over soft water over and over starts to strip mineral content from living soils so you're going to want to add back uh, minerals to that water preferably using something like a drops of balance or um, even a, a sea salt you can use to add a little bit of minerals back to your water to ensure that doesn't happen now using soft water on a living soil system isn't extremely bad especially if you're good at um, practicing you know good watering practices where you're not over watering and having a bunch of water come out of the bottom of the pot actually washing a bunch of the minerals and nutrients away if you're using soft water and slowly water it in and the water doesn't go anywhere it's less of a problem but you would definitely in my opinion benefit from adding some minerals to a, a a minerally devoid water for uh, living soils or organic systems now water quality is a science all of in its own and can be studied and talked about for quite a while but i think these basics are a good place to start and we should talk a little bit about the best watering practices and the best quality water that you can find now there are a few rules of thumb i like to follow when starting fresh and mixing a new batch of soil you're going to need to bring that new mix up to field capacity now field capacity is the amount of soil moisture or water content held in the soil after excess water has been drained away and the rate of downward movement has been decreased so basically when you put enough water in the container of soil for it to absorb all the water and no water is dripping out and the downward falling of the water due to gravity has decreased that is field capacity now another good way to test if you've reached field capacity is to pick up a sample of the soil that you just mixed up and squeeze it really hard in your hand if you can squeeze really hard in your hand and some drops come out and actually fall away from your hand it's a little bit too much that's a little over field capacity you should be able to squeeze the soil really tight and water might you know build up on your hand a little bit but it shouldn't drop away and the, the soil will remain kind of clumped because you squeezed it so hard that's the exact moisture content we're looking for when mixing up a brand new soil 
once at field capacity, you want to keep your soil at 90 to 95% of field capacity most of the time while your plants are growing. Now, don't get too worried if your moisture level gets a bit low. Your plants will tell you and so will the weight of the container. Ideally, you don't want to drop below 50% of field capacity to prevent a massive slowdown in the nutrient cycling that happens in a living soil if a living soil gets too dry. And that goes for soil that has plants in it or doesn't have plants in it. So let's go back over a few of the things that uh, we learned and discussed in this video. Hydro and soilless growers really benefit from having a zero mineral content water that's extremely clean, bacteria and virus and pathogen free. So that when they add their um, fertigation supplies to the water, they can count on accurate measurements and, you know, succeed on a higher level than not being able to track whether there's uh, minerals in it or not. Now, on the living soil side of things, there's a little bit more leeway. The main thing that you want to be concerned about on the living soil, on the water cleanliness, is if there is a crazy bacteria or virus in it, that's not good. But if you are getting tap water, you're just going to want to make sure that it's chlorine-free and chloramine-free, fluoride-free, and is of, you know, neutral pH. That's the main thing that we want to look out for when using water for a living soil or organic situation is that it's chlorine and chemical free and that the pH is neutral. If you can get that, that's the, the best way to go for a living soil. Now, if that means you can get some from a natural spring or you got a pond or a lake nearby that you can acquire water from, you, may, you can probably use that water without any treatment, maybe just a particulate filter. Now, I would test it because some of the water supplies around the world are tainted with chemicals from other industries. So I would still test it, but you, you do have that option. Now, like I said, let's go over a little bit of the watering filter options. Like for the living soil people, you may just want a, a boogie blue filter or maybe a... Um, Hydrolock dechlorinator filter, and if it's extremely bad, you want to want an RO filter. And then for the hydro people, uh, the best option is distilled or RO water. Now, the the bad thing about distilled or RO water for both living soil and hydro systems is that it costs more money. It costs money whether you're using energy to make it distilled or you're using RO membranes to make sure that you've rejected all the water that has minerals in it and only accepted the water that has no minerals in it. So there is a, a little bit of a downside to RO or distilled water, but there's a huge upside if you're counting on these plants for production plants for medicine, food and medicine. Now a little bit of the tips on some auto irrigation stuff for our living soil people because you know, a lot of the hydro people already know about you know automated watering. Their entire system is automated watering. But for our, our living soil folks, um, AC Infinity has come out with a, a really cool wicking system that you can easily um, you know rebuild yourself if you have a larger bed style grow. If you want, you can take the, the wicking material that you can easily get off of Amazon and many other places and make a radiator loop be below the bed and stick the two ends of the wick in a reservoir and it will keep the bed, you know, moisture content at a pretty good level all the way through the grow as long as that reservoir is full. Much like, uh, what are they, the city... Um, earth boxes or, um, you know, SIP type systems. It works much like that. There's also, you know, drip systems, or I also have used the HydroLock um, drip right system, which works quite well. Now, th those are a little bit more complicated, it includes moving parts, the pumps can break. Um, it counts on you still knowing what is and isn't the optimal amount of water. And what I like about um, you know, the wicking or SIP type systems is that as, as long as the soil's built well, 
and you have, you know, a plant's growing in it, it's really easy to keep the optimal amount of water inside of an earth box or a, a SIP type system. Well, I hope you guys learned a little something about water quality and some, you know, rules of thumb on watering practices. I hope everybody had an extremely great holiday. Shout out to all the Green Gang people following and subscribing. I see the number going up and that uh, means we're reaching more people and getting this information out further. If you guys want to check out me and Lantern over on Twitch, we like to talk about growing and uh, ask any questions on over there. We're usually playing some video games and t talking about our favorite plant. Everybody have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.